is up. And I'll here today bring you guys another cartoon creepypasta. So in this cartoon creepypasta, we are going to be reading the story of the Three Stooges. It is called The Dead Dunderheads. So with that said, if you guys think you guys are going to enjoy, be sure to drop a like. Hit that subscribe button down below with the notification bell on. Be sure to go check out my Snapchat and my Twitter and my Facebook group and my Instagram to you know interact with me because i'm always on all those so be sure you do that as well as check out my vlog channel i'm gonna be posting more recently on it it's just that it's you know i've been really busy in real life so it makes it kind of hard to you know do all of this but with that said we're gonna go ahead and get into this story when the original three stooges aired in 1930 it was obviously going to be a big hit it aired in almost every movie theater. Three Stooges were only aired in movie theaters for the first few years across the country. Three Stooges had begun to air on television and had multiple spin-offs, including The Three Stooges with Mo, Joe, and Larry, or The Three Stooges with Mo, Shimp, and Larry. But everyone's favorite was probably The Three Stooges with Curly Howard. Opinions began to change when almost every Three Stooges fan was revealed to one of the most shocking episodes yet. It was 1947 and the episode Half Wits Holiday was about to come to theaters. This episode marked the end of the Mo, Larry, and Curly era as Curly had suffered a major stroke on set. Surprisingly, the episode only aired in two or three theaters in the U.S., and only a few people had attended the screenings for it. On the fourth day of release, the film aired at a small suburban neighborhood shopping center. The shopping center had a theater with the latest films of the generation. According to the police, only three or four individuals had arrived in the theater to watch a simple screening of what they thought would be Half Wits Holiday. It was later revealed that it was much more than that. The episode started off normally as any regular episode would. The title frame would slowly fade into view and remained on screen for a good minute. This is when things began to go away. The title frame began to shake violently, then disappeared altogether. Viewers were showed a white screen for a good five minutes and reported quite a ruckus, possibly a struggle of an individual. An alternate title frame slowly faded into view and was simply labeled The Three Stooges in a similar font except without the faces of the main actors and the music playing in the background. The title frame faded out and the name of the episode was widely printed across the screen. The words read, Dead Dunderheads, for a split second, then abruptly transferred to Dead Dunderheads, then simply to just, Dead. The screen quickly transferred to the actual episode. A camera faced a room with no furniture. With the exception of some tarp on the ground and a ladder in the background, it apparently looked as if a room was being remodeled. A man dressed up as Mo waddles onto the screen reluctantly, wearing a cheap bowl cut wig that looked as if it was able to fall off. A tag is clearly seen in the back of the wig, whether it was for entertainment purposes or not. The man had a worried look in his face, his eyes darting around the room nervously, his fingers constantly fidgeting. He appeared to be waiting for someone to come on screen. Small murmurs are heard in the background, and after about 30 seconds, a so-called Curly is apparently pushed on screen. Curly was an overweight man with a black eye and multiple cuts on his cheeks and scalp. His mouth was slanted in a downward position, and he too looked nervous. He told Mo to go check the flooring on the other side of the room in an unprofessional way, quietly with a couple of words slurred. Mo shuffles off camera, and as soon as he leaves the sight of the camera, a so-called Larry walks onto the screen. 
This had to be the worst of the two. It was a female with her hair messily cut and styled to represent the original Larry from the original Stooges. During lines, she would occasionally sob or mispronounce a word or two. Curly tells her that he needs to fix the roof and points to the ladder. By now, tears are clearly visible streaming down Larry's face as she hesitates to walk over to the ladder. She finally seems to build up enough courage to climb up a few steps on the ladder and pretends to work on the roof with a wrench. Curly then bends down and pulls out a toolbox. He reveals that he has multiple sharp, dangerous tools with him and lays them out on the tarp. For a few minutes, everything seems to be normal. Around the three minute mark, Mo walks onto the screen, stares at the ladder that Larry is working on and heaves a sigh. He slowly walks by the ladder as the camera zooms in on his feet. One of his feet gets caught on one of the legs of the ladder, and the ladder is swept from underneath Larry. Mo hits the ground hard as the ladder comes crashing down. Larry falls down onto the ground on top of the ladder, along with the wrench, which hits Mo in the back of the head. Mo appears to spew blood onto the ground, but by the next frame, the blood is gone and Mo is cleaned up. A look of pain comes onto the face of female Larry. He struggles to stand up and it appears that he had landed on his wrist. He clenches his wrist tightly as he walks over to Mo, waits for him to stand up and pokes him in the eye rather aggressively. Mo cries oh and falls to the ground, his hand covering his eyes. He quickly works himself up, gives Larry a death glare and stares a chilling line. If you want a war, you'll get a war. He smacks Larry upside the head, leaving Larry distorted and in pain. He pushes a curly out of the way who has finished laying out his tools. Mo bends down and picks up a screwdriver. He trudges over to Larry who is still hunched over in pain. He taps on Larry's shoulder, Larry looks up and Mo drives the screwdriver into Larry's eye. By now, three of the four audience members have gotten up and left the theater. Children crying, women shaking with fear, the only remaining audience member was a male in his 20s. An amateur movie maker studying the art of movies and, and television shorts so that one day a film could be in the theaters. Sure, he was disgusted, but he had no idea that it was real. He continued to take notes about the film's violent nature. The three audience members report to the staff who assume that the wrong movie is playing and also assume that everyone has left the theater so they leave the film running. Mo lets go of the screwdriver and puts his bloody hands over his eyes, appearing to block the violence away from his vision. The camera now focuses on Larry now crying, blood running down his face. Larry drops the tarp and passes out from shock. It is unknown if Larry is even alive by now, but if it even matters, Mo bends down and yanks the screwdriver out of Larry's eye. The screwdriver possibly penetrated the brain, leaving Larry motionless on the tarp. Mo faces the camera and mutters, you heartless, sick, bah. The film is obviously edited out because a puddle of blood had now formed underneath Larry and Mo had multiple bruises and cuts on his face now. The man watching the film later complained to authorities that the film began to get fuzzy and distorted, giving me a headache. A headache indeed. The film appeared to be damaged at this part of the film reel. As the screen flashes white and black rapidly, leaving the next series of events illegible for the next few minutes. After the flashing stops, the audio appears to not work anymore. As it appears, Mo is saying something to Curly, but it is impossible to hear what they are saying. Since the beginning and the end of the white flashing, Mo appears to have new cuts and Curly appears to have a sliced lip. Larry is now obviously dead, but the actors take no notice to him. Mo now appears to be sawing some wood with a rusty old saw. 
and Curly is hammering some nails into the wall for no apparent reason. As Curly walks across the room to get some more nails off screen, he slips on one of the tools he laid out and reaches for Mo to help him. He accidentally grabs for the saw, scratching his hand vulgarly. As he hits the ground with a thud, the audio abruptly begins to work again here, and Curly is now heard whimpering as he crawls off screen, leaving a trail of blood. You fool, someone could have gotten hurt, Mo shouts. He scolds Curly when he walks back onto the screen by giving him a sturdy punch in the stomach. A strange look comes upon Curly's face as he bends over and vomits up a little fluid. Small chuckles and snickers are heard in the background as Curly returns to punching nails in the wall, now breathing heavier as if he was about to burst into tears. About five minutes pass and Curly asks for some help from Mo to nail some more nails into the wall. Mo holds the nails as Curly hammers the nail more and more into the wall. You'd expect Curly to hit Mo on the thumb with the hammer, but it luckily doesn't happen. Instead, when Mo walks back to sawing more wood, he asks Curly for some help. Curly holds the wooden plank for Mo, who messily cuts and deliberately lets the saw blade graze Curly's fingers. Curly quickly draws away with a furious look in his face, picks up his hammer and swings the hammer into Mo's genitals. As Mo falls to the floor, blood and semen leak out of his pants. He gasps for breath as he grabs Curly's leg and begins to bite Curly, gives another swing of the hammer to Mo's hand, leaving it dislocated with the bone snapped. Mo crawls over to the saw, now on the floor, and throws it at Curly. The saw blade penetrates Curly's big round belly as blood oozes out from both his stomach and mouth. He lets go of the hammer which falls upon his toes making a large echoing cracking sound. Curly begins to mumble gibberish and slurred sentences about toys and sports, then rude remarks about his mother and his genitals as he talks and faces the camera. Blood often manages to shoot out of his mouth and onto the lens of the camera. During the middle of one of his sentences, he collapses to the ground, barely even alive, and manages to grab the hammer, still mumbling on and on about nonsense and heaves it with the last bit of strength at Mo, who is now unconscious. The hammer slams into his back, shattering his spine. Curly manages to laugh a little bit but then passes out from blood loss. Loud laughter is now heard as the film reel decays, leaving a plain white screen. The laughter soon fades out and the one man in the audience is left in awe. The police arrive a few minutes later who manage to seize the film and evacuate the theater from possible threats. Okay, so the next part of this, which we're going to go ahead and read now, is called The Aftershock and the Analysis. As of right now, I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you guys are, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Leave a like and also hit that notification bell. I'd greatly appreciate it. With that said, let's go ahead and get into the part that says Aftershock and Analysis. We're only going to do it because it's really short. It's probably going to add like another five minutes. So I hope you guys enjoy the long video. All right, let's do it. When police entered the room where the film was being projected onto the screen, they found a man, supposedly the one who was originally supposed to air Halfwit's Holiday, tied up and intensely beaten. The man remembers little and is worried that the man who tied him up might come back and kill him if he gives any information to the police. It is obvious that the wounds that the man has taken were not self-inflicted but he is still a major suspect in the case. The man who had made the film reel is said to be a sadistic filmmaker who was addicted to the Three Stooges. The police have no information on him at all apart from some evidence from the film. Police have three things to work with the film. For a few seconds, a shadow appears of a man holding something similar to a clipboard. The shadow then goes out of sight. The second piece of evidence is a few mistakes he had with the film. 
as he had accidentally revealed his tone of voice with a few snickers he had let escape out of his mouth multiple times. His voice is deep and hollow and it seems to belong to a white man in his 50s. The third piece of evidence is a visible when the man appears to signal for something to come to him, letting his hand come onto the camera. His hand had multiple scars, wrinkles, and freckles, signaling that he is in his late 50s when the film aired that day. The actor for Curly was actually an autistic man kidnapped from the mental hospital when he wandered out the front door and down the street. The actor for Mo was a businessman who was addicted to drinking alcohol and doing drugs. He was kidnapped on his way home from work. The actress for Larry was a cheating wife who had four husbands. She was kidnapped while walking to her job. The three had no relation in any way, but what the police did discover is that they each had flaws in their lives. And the police assumed that the madman wanted to make life more perfect by erasing all flaws from the human race. The film was shot on location in a local abandoned office building. The actor for Mo was pronounced dead, the actress for Larry was also pronounced dead, but the actor for Curly was in critical condition and was on the verge of death. He slowly recuperated and managed to live for a few more years until committing suicide. He did not tell the police much, but what he did tell was rather helpful. The bad man ran out the door and drove away. He told one of his friends that he was going far, far away. Police have been on the lookout all over the country, but there has been no luck. The reward for capturing him has been raised to $5 million. Columbia Pictures was notified about this event, but refused to comment on it. A couple of workers quit from Columbia shortly, believing that one of them could have been the sick person that wrote this. As for the amateur filmmaker, he came to be my grandfather who happened to tell me this whole story. He has been questioned by the authorities as well and is also another major factor in this. The man who had filmed the film though is probably dead. If he was in his 50s 70 years ago, the case can be dismissed and all can be at peace. Well, I'd love to tell you more, but I have to leave. Someone was talking to me about starring in an independent film. All right, I hope you guys have enjoyed this story. I enjoyed this story. I'd give this story an eight out of 10. It was pretty cool. It was pretty long. It kind of, it kind of dragged on a little bit, but other than that, it was pretty cool. It was, uh, I liked it. I liked it. It was a good read, but uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below with the notification bell on. Be sure to check out my Discord, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Snapchat, my Facebook, all that stuff. All the links will be down in the description as well to the pinned comment at the top. Um, also, if you guys would check out my vlog channel, that'll also be at the pinned comment at the top, and I will be sure to um, go ahead and upload more on that. That was so we can have that going as well. So with that said, I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, I should record another video this week. It should come out maybe later this week. Uh, with that said, I hope you guys enjoy. Peace out.